Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about something I cannot believe that I'm bringing you guys. Um, honestly, I never anticipated on having it in the first place. Uh, but as you know, by clicking on the title, today we're going to be talking about none other than the next generation aiming laser or the Ingall. Here we go. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to remind you guys that I do have a web store and I do have some merchandise that I'm trying to sell right now. Um, we're going to sell the rest of the uh, remaining sticker pack at a discounted rate, so go ahead and check that price out if you want to get a hold of the limited production uh, 2020 stickers. Um, so, thank you. So, this is going to be a very niche video because there are a few people who even know what this is. Um, you see, you know, people are just used to seeing these. Uh, PEC-15 or at PLC or you know, whatever. Um, this is kind of the uh, bread and butter as far as aiming lasers when it comes to military. Um, this is the most common uh, military laser that you'll see today on small arms, you know, like M4, Mark 18, etc, etc. But we are going to be talking about the next generation of aiming lasers. So the Ingall, just like the PEC-15, is made by L3. Um, they had some restructuring in their corporation, which I'm, you know, I'm not 100% sure on, uh, but this is made by L3 Technologies, um, and it has some very similar techniques or you know, some very similar operations to the PEC-15, and it kind of has some uh, you know, operator similarities. So if you're used to running a PEC-15, you will probably be able to adapt to using an Ingall um, on your rifle. So right off the bat, the first thing that you will see when you open an Ingall, or when you have an Ingall, um, is the size difference from a PEC-15. I mean, it, it, is, it is tiny. Uh, when I opened it, it feels like a toy uh, because it's so small, it's so lightweight. Something that is nice about the Ingall is that it's made out of metal versus the traditional polymer housing of the Appiel or PEC-15. Um, so that's kind of nice. It adds some, you know, some like quality feel, some, you know, I'm sure, durability and ruggedness to it. Um, but that is kind of nice. So it, um, a lot of people call it the forbidden chocolate bar just because the um, brown color of the anodizing on, I assume it's aluminum. So if you look at the front of the Ingall versus the front of the PEC-15, you'll notice that there is no adjustment for the illuminator, um, you know, the illuminator adjustment as far as tightening it or, you know, opening the beam. Um, so let me remove the cap real quick on the PEC-15. So on a traditional PEC-15, if you're wanting to adjust the illuminator, you would uh, turn this knob and you would adjust the illuminator as you see fit. But with the Ingall, and for those of you who have a PEC-15, you'll know that you know sometimes it binds with the, uh, the protector cap. Um, it's kind of just awkward reaching in front of the laser, manipulating it like that. But the Ingall, the adjustment is actually behind the housing, so it's on the, on the rear of the laser, and it's just it's so much more easy. Um, you don't have to fight the, uh, the, the protective cover. Um, it just makes for a lot easier manipulation of the actual illuminator adjustment. So I have the honor of doing the first unboxing of an Ingall on YouTube. Uh, kind of unique. I don't think anyone, um, <laughs> I don't think many people get this opportunity and I wanted to share it with you guys. So here we go. So this is how the Ingall comes. It's just like the PEC-15. It comes in just like a standard black bag. It has some sort of like loops or whatever. Um, but open it up and got the Ingall. We got the two button remote, like we discussed. Have a laminated instruction card, um, talks about laser safety, zeroing procedure, etc. Yeah. So got that. We have some pattern generators. So just like on the uh, the PEC-15, you have a square, triangle, plus, and a circle. And then last but not least, the thing that no one ever reads, the instruction manual. So this talks about everything you need to know to operate your new Ingall. 
So the front of the Ingol is really kind of where it shines. It's much more low profile than the PEC-15 in the fact that it doesn't have the illuminator adjustment in the front. So really you just have these covers and your illuminator, your aim, and I'm sorry, your uh, visible and your infrared aim lasers. And really that's the front of the unit. Um, on the top you have the standard selector switch just like I talked about on the PEC-15. So um, it has really similar uh, positions as far as, you know, uh, clockwise goes infrared and counterclockwise goes visible. You can really kind of tell just holding them side by side that uh, the end goal is just absolutely tiny. So um, really they, they kind of have the same footprint as far as width, um, but the PEC-15 has a more wraparound of the weapon versus the end goal kind of sits on top of the rail because the Picatinny section is only just that thick. Um, so really it's only like maybe a uh, half of an inch over, you know, a standard Picatinny slot. So the end goal is super low profile. Uh, the rear of the unit is really where it kind of sets itself apart. So obviously, like I said, you have the illuminator adjustment in the back. You have the plug for the switch right here. And then you have your battery cap, which holds your CR123. So it's kind of a pain because my switch is still mounted to my rifle, but this is the traditional InSight switch that's been used since, you know, uh, PEC 2 days, maybe even before PEC 2 days. Um, so this has kind of been the standard switch. So you see it kind of has those uh, metal protrusions and then it just sticks in the back of the housing. So the new one really has no similarities at all. So the new one actually is just a cylindrical plug with, you know, copper contacts where it needs to contact. So um, the remote is kind of one thing that's super cool about the Ingol. Um, it's kind of different. So those of you who are, you know, with the philosophy of uh, standardization, well, since this is a next generation, there's going to be some generational changes. So this is one of those things. You won't be able to use old generation switches with your next generation laser. Just a quick demonstration of how you, you know, use the remote. So obviously you just plug it into the back of the Ingol. Now it's inserted. So the this is the two button remote. So like I said, that this is the, uh, the mode, whatever it's selected in. And then this is the visible override. So if I were to select it, um, now I'd be in aim low and infrared. So if I were to fire this, it would fire an infrared laser in low mode. But if I were to hit the visible override, and I'm not sure if you can see it, it would turn on the visible laser. So whatever mode you are selected in, as soon as you hit the visible override button, you will be in visible. So that's kind of the um, way that the two button remote works. So if we address the elephant in the room, the question is how do I get one of these? I want to play with one of these, why can't I get one? Well, as you all know, or if you're interested in this type of stuff, these high power lasers are restricted to military and law enforcement just because the power of the, the laser rating. Um, this is actually a law enforcement demo unit, uh, which I was um, lucky enough to have the chance to review for you guys, which I thought was super cool because there's not a lot of information about these things. Um, but unfortunately, if you're not law enforcement or military, chances are kind of slim that you'll be able to uh, get a hold of one of these, unfortunately. So I was able to go out with my night vision and get get a few videos through my night vision and see the differences between the PEC-15 and the Angol uh, and the differences that I observed. Okay, this is the PEC-15 laser and illuminator. So it's about 100 yards. Okay, I'm going to turn on the Ingol. So it's PEC-15 on the left, Ingol on the right. Both set to uh, illuminator and laser. So I'm going to adjust the illuminator on the Ingol. That's all the way backed out on the end goal.
Okay, this is a limited error back dial all the way on the PEC 15. And then in ball. Yeah, pretty big difference. Okay, that's the laser only. Is PEC 15 laser only? Keep going. The, uh, let's go over here. PEC 15 and in ball. Okay, we're going to start with the in ball all the way open on the illuminator. We're going to focus it down. Okay, so that's the Ingall Illuminator all the way down. Okay, turn that off. And then we're going to go to the PEC-15. Okay, we're going to tighten this one all the way down. So this is all the way open. We're going to tighten it all the way down. Okay. So... Tech 15 illuminator only, all the way down, and in gall illuminator all the way down. Okay, this is the Tech 15 visible laser, and this is the in gall visible laser on low. Can you drop the night vision? What's that? Can you drop the night vision? No, no, we'll keep it on for now. Okay, and we're going to turn the in goal on high. And PEC 15. So obviously, in goal will stay the same. And we'll go all the way up. Cool. So when you're talking about integrating the in goal with a weapon system, I think that it shines with weapons that are meant to be low profile, um, ones that you know you're you're focused on reducing bulk on the front end. Um, as you can see on my Honey Badger SD, um, the profile of the ingall isn't much bigger than the profile of the rail, which is naturally, you know, already pretty slim. So it allows um, it allows the operator to have a lot more of a streamlined package. You know, less snag points. Um, it points better. Um, honestly, the ergonomics of the ingall are so much better than the PEC 15. Um, it doesn't feel like there's a giant plastic brick on the end of your gun. Um, you know. It, it really is an upgrade from the PEC-15. Unfortunately, I wish that I could tell you all that you could go out and buy an Engol uh, from your nearest Walmart, but you know that's not how it is these days. Um, and I wish that you know freedom was more accessible. But this is truly a substantial upgrade from a PEC-15. So if you are a law enforcement or military agent person, um, this is definitely an upgrade from your aging PEC-15s or you know. It, somehow you still are using a PEC-2. Um, so the next generation of aiming lasers, super cool. That being said, um, since you know normal people like you and me can't really have these, um, I would love to keep it, but I can't. Uh, I wanted to share with you some cool stuff that you might not see every day um, and kind of put out the word because not many people know about these devices. So um, this has been the next generation aiming laser. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.